Hello everybody and welcome to the Real Tarot 1123. Um, this is going to be a, uh, a year ahead reading for uh, my beautiful Sagittarians, correct? Uh, and this is going to be uh, for November 2021 going on to October 2020. Two. All right. So a um, couple of things I wanted to say. I have a list of all these planetary positions and charts and etc. I actually what I'm going to do is I will get into the planetary positions at the end of the video just so as not to confuse everybody. It can get a little bit heavy. It can get a little bit confusing. You know, people can kind of get lost in it. Not everybody is in it for astrology a lot of people are in it for just you know tarot etc so i want to make sure that you know we keep things uh, transparent the best we can so you know those of you who want to read just tarot can go to the beginning watch the whole video and those of you who are interested in tarot as well as astrology can stay tuned till the end because the astrology aspect of it i'm going to be telling you what planets are in retrograde motion etc for the whole year, meaning from November 2021, going all the way to October uh, 2022. Am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. So for, to my real family, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And this is for all of you beautiful Sagittarians. Remember, I'm a Sagittarian myself, so I'm excited. <laughs> But this is a general reading, you know, if you want more in-depth analysis of your chart, etc., you can get in touch with me. I uh, can certainly do a personal reading where I will need your date of birth, your time of birth, your place of birth. And then the charts and the planetary positions will all be very, very specific to you. Okay, so this is general. Take what resonates and if it doesn't resonate, watch your uh, sign reading for your rising sign, your moon sign, your Venus sign, etc. Um, maybe that will resonate with you. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. All right. Because I thought about it, I was like, you know, I want to read a little bit of astrology, then I want to do the tarot, then I was like, no, it gets too confusing. So overall energy, uh, let's make sure, overall energies for November. So overall energy for November 2021, we have the moon and we have Sagittarius, which is beautiful. I love it. So the moon card is telling me over here that um, there is something that is a little bit, you know, hidden. There's beware of deception. I'm also saying that for those of you who do have psychic abilities, this is going to be being your birth month and which is your first, first house. The first house is all about you. It's uh, how you present yourself, who you are within yourself how you think of yourself, how others perceive you to be. It's all about you. So if you have any psychic abilities, etc., this month, uh, or, or if you're intuitive, if you have sensitivity, uh, like you're a sensitive, etc., or an empath, this month there could be heightened uh, um, emotions, heightened uh, abilities this month. So pay attention to your uh, dreams, what you see, what you hear, what you pick up on. Pay attention to all those energies and Sagittarius yes you are your first house so 18 plus 9 is how much 18 19 20 27 27 is 9 9 thousand again could mean that maybe you're going to be traveling a little in November okay all right here we go what else do we have for November of 2021 Six of Pentacles, November Six of Pentacles is give a little, take a little, exchange of funds, maybe, you know, uh, trading, maybe somebody is helping you with finances, maybe you are helping somebody with finances, okay? Then we have the High Priestess, beautiful card, ruled by the moon, okay? Mystical quietness, something remains hidden, do not rush. If you're having any 
financial give and take with others don't rush and don't make blind rash decisions remember we got the moon card as well so something is hidden be careful okay uh, just don't blindly give your money away to somebody make sure it's all written and you know that sort of a thing then uh, we have the magician fantastic all right you have the ability to summon new ideas and to create new things so that's fantastic for the month of november absolutely beautiful energy let's get an overall energy card for the month of november for my beautiful sagittarians the princess of staves that is wands so what this is telling me is take action okay have that youthful energy about you take action but then again don't rush into things so you are willing to take action you have that that uh, energy about you where you're like the go-getter, you want to go out and you want to do things. This is your birth month because you feel renewed, to refresh. Take action, but measure yourself, okay? Don't just blindly run off and do crazy things. That's November. Let's go on to December. You have the death card. Nothing to freak out about. Don't flip out. The death card basically means things are coming to an end, right? Change and rebirth. Death means something has to die before something can come to life. And then you have Venus, beautiful energy, right? So the death card is telling me that something definitely needs to come to an end for something new to begin. It talks about toxic relationship. relationship. You may feel like you are being controlled by something or somebody. And it is definitely regarding a feminine energy, Venus. Venus rules Taurus. So uh, Venus also rules Libra. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 6,009 house. So be careful, okay? If you feel like somebody is manipulating you, ooh, you've got to be a little bit careful, okay? And again, with Venus and the death card over there, I'm also going to go out and say, you know, maybe you are going to be changing your appearance. Maybe you are going to do something about how you physically present yourself outside. So maybe you've lost a lot of weight. Maybe you're going to focus on on uh, your health and gym and exercise or maybe you know with the venus over there you suddenly realize you are going to start spending a lot of money etc but yeah december right holiday season we're all going to go out there and keep shopping like the world's coming to an end right so i'm going to say watch your purse strings uh including myself that's my advice to myself but you're going to want all the nice things beautiful things etc so 16 uh 26 27 28 29 so that's 11 that's two so yeah, it's about your possessions, etc. So be careful as to how you spend your money, okay, in December. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune is a Jupiter card. It's power, movement, fortune. There is something that is going to be revealed to you in December. Be patient. Don't overextend yourself. And you have the Queen of Pentacles. This is definitely regarding money, right? This is, the universe is asking you to be resourceful, okay? Be very, very resourceful, uh, with how you, you know, holiday season, we get it, you want to go buy and spend and this and that, but be resourceful, don't just give away your money, okay, so, and it's all about your home, etc., so that's also a focus for you, and then we have temperance, you show up, the universe is telling you, you've got to temper yourself, you've got to maintain balance, okay, temperance is Sagittarius energy, so it's about blending out the essence of life, mixing of elements and finding balance, so even though it is a month where you're going to have to Kind of spend and buy gifts for people and all that stuff temper yourself okay find the balance if you need to you know uh, buy one expensive items and a few other little little items that are not so expensive do that not every single gift has to be super expensive right temper yourself temper yourself don't get suckered in into all the marketing and the beauty and you know that sort of stuff don't get suckered into that okay but i'm also going to say you're going to make some changes, some real changes in your life. But with Venus showing up over there, <laughs> temperance showing up over there, and the Queen of Pentacles, which is all that earthy energy, meaning good food, good wine, watch your weight. Okay. Oh, okay. Overall energy for December. Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords, you're going to feel like you've hit rock bottom over there. <laughs> you know, maybe you, you, you're going to feel like so overextended that you're like, oh, I can't deal with this no more. So maybe that's why you're going to be changing yourself. You're going to be starting something new, looking at yourself from a different perspective to be able to make changes, maybe to your physical appearance. So, and you may feel like you've really hit rock bottom and this is your turning point. So uh, pay attention to that food, wine and drink and, you know, all the luxury stuff. Pay attention to that. Don't overextend. Uh, 
November, December, this is January. You have Gemini, okay? Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh house. Seventh house is all about your friends, marriage, partners, contracts, relationships. So you have your lover. So friends, partners, contracts, marriage, relationships are the focus in January. So let's take a look at January. Ace of Cups, a beautiful emotional offer. Could be getting married in January. Proposal, beautiful. I love it. I love it. And then you have your Three of Swords. Now this, you, you, you go, Kirtana, you got the, the proposal, marriage, lovers, etc. And partnerships, contacts, and then you have the Three of Swords. Well, that's crazy. Like, why? So the Three of Swords may be, you know... Uh, a little bit of heartbreak it could be you know could actually also mean surgery could be divorce too for some people okay but hang on you have the seven of swords okay and the seven of swords is telling me you may feel you may feel uh, betrayed you may feel like you want to run away you've had it so two scenarios some of you may be getting engaged or may get a proposal of marriage e either way you look at it you have the lover's card you have Gemini. Gemini, as I said, is ruled by Mercury. It's the seventh house, friends, marriage, partners, contacts, and relationship. And Mercury, so you may feel very mercurial about your relationship. Okay, your relationship may go through some ups and downs. And there may be a proposal of marriage too, but you may feel iffy about that proposal. So that's a possibility too, right? And some of you may end up in a divorce. Some of you may end up having some heartbreak, okay, because of the relationship. So... Yeah, two of swords. Two of swords is saying time to compromise or make a decision, right? So January, time to compromise or make a decision. Let's go to February. February. Remember, time and energy is fluid, right? And this is general. February, we have Mars. Mars rules Aries. Fury, feisty energy, right? And then you have temperance. Temperance is Sagittarius, right? Ace of Swords. Page of Wands. The Devil. And Two of Swords. So what this is telling me in uh, February is you're feeling very mercurial i mean you're feeling very fiesty you're maybe because january has put you through a little bit of a strike with regards to that relationship you're feeling very kind of you know okay i need to take action i need to take action and guess what the universe is saying yeah take action but do it in a find your balance first do it in a calm cool way and then yes ace of swords ace of swords is like you know new ideas conflict surgery and you need mental clarity to make this decision regarding your relationship. And Page of Wands, right? And Page of Wands is saying, yeah, you have to find a new approach. Be creative in how you're going to go about dealing with this relationship. Be it a proposal that you want to accept, or maybe you're feeling mercurial and you want to say, no, I don't want to get married. And the devil energy is definitely Capricorn, right? It's ruled by Capricorn. And it's saying there is a little bit of dependency, codependency in this relationship. And then two of swords. Two of swords is saying time to compromise and make a decision. You can't keep lollygagging about this re this relationship and being mercurial about it forever and a day. This is crunch time. Make a decision. Accept the proposal and move on. Or say I can't deal with it. Here's your ring. Take the ring back and move on. Four of swords. Yeah. Four of swords is saying you will rest. You will need some rest. You will need some solitude. You are going to take a step back and you're going to think about these things. You are kind of feeling a little bit overwhelmed and you definitely need to uh, kind of take a step back and, you know, retreat. You could be retreating from this person too. So November, December, January, February, let's go to March. Oh... Mars, your overall energy is Uranus, right? And Uranus is all about sudden changes and shocks. And 
then you have the Wheel of Fortune. I don't know why this thing is lifting here. Gotta fix it. Five of Pentacles, Three of Wands, and the Empress. I'll take that too. So, remember this in March, you have Uranus, right? Sudden shocks and changes. Wheel of Fortune, right? Things are moving around. Something that's hidden is going to come to light and that could be the sudden shock or uh, change. Then you have the Five of Pentacles. You're going to feel like you're left out in the cold. Okay, you're going to feel like, oh, you're, you're, See, this card typically says poverty, ill health, worry, isolation, financial loss. But it could also mean because of this relationship, you could be having some financial struggles, right? And then you have your three of wands. Three of wands is saying teamwork, commerce, expansion, and travel, okay? And then you're having the empress and the emperor. So this situation, March, because of this relationship, you are having some issues in terms of Things are moving, things that are hidden are coming to light. It's going to be shocking. It's going to reveal something. The Wheel of Fortune is going to reveal something to you. Sudden shock, sudden changes, okay? You may feel like you have lost, uh, had some financial losses because of this relationship. And it's going to put you in a little bit of a situation. And Three of Wands, you're going, then you have to kind of, you end up having to team up with somebody else to for the sake of commerce to be able to come out of this little boo-boo situation and to be able to expand and travel and you will travel you will travel for sure and guess what you have the emperor and the emperor show up how cool is that now the empress is ruled by venus it's luxury pregnancy abundance beautiful bountiful stuff the emperor is aries independence accumulating wealth being the leader and this to me is fantastic because it is saying that maybe Remember this situation, this mercurial situation with your relationship we were not too sure of? Maybe after this rest and respite in February where you said I, I need to take a small break from this relationship, you took that break and you came back and you're like, yes, it has caused me some loss, it has caused me some worry, I get it. But now we are going to team up again, maybe with the same person to be able to get things clarified, resolve our differences, become a proper team so we can expand and go and travel and do what we need to. Or there is a possibility you're going to be teaming up with somebody completely new and it is going to be an Aries. So either way an Aries, which is making me kind of a little, uh, because guess who my significant other is? He's an Aries. <laughs> and guess who this person is? She's a Sagittarius. <laughs> So, so, in all honesty, when I talk about my personal relationship with Mark, uh, we are actually, for the past year, we have been going back and forth in terms of, you know, our retirement and how we want things to be and all that stuff. So this completely resonates with me, not that we're going to break up or do anything like that, but we have been seriously thinking about how we need to team up to be able to, uh, both of us retire and be happy and yet sustain ourselves through our retirement and through the rest of our lives. So that conversation we've been having for the past year, we've also thought about relocating, etc. So this kind of, to a certain extent, does resonate with me. So that's just sharing a little bit of me. So you understand how things correlate. It's not do or die type of thing, right? And then we have the Ace of Cups. Fantastic. Again, a proposal, maybe marriage. Maybe now you'll be like, oh, okay, let's get married now. Maybe you were not too keen on getting married that time, but now you'll be like, yeah, okay, we've resolved our differences. Now I'm okay, I accept your proposal, let's get married. Isn't that beautiful? So, November, December, January, February, March. So, let's do April. Earth is your overall energy for April. The Emperor again, very strong Aries energy, <laughs> very grounded, beautiful, I love it actually. A 
Six of Wands, Victory, oh, Knight of Cups, Ten of Wands, beautiful. So I feel like this is all going to work out for you just fine. Earth energy, you're going to be very grounded. Earth energy is again Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo. So this is telling me that uh, you're going to feel very grounded, absolutely grounded with this emperor, which is an Aries. You have the Six of Wands. Six of Wands is talking about uh, victory, you know, recognition, good news, success, which is beautiful. So maybe you are resolved your situation and now it is a successful partnership and you're able to move on. Knight of Cups. Knight of Cups is telling me that there is, uh, you know, now you all have recognized each other to be reliable people. Your patience and your hard work has paid off. And Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is saying finally all that stress and exhaustion and all that stuff, that whole drama that you all had going on right uh february and march that whole drama it's all coming to an end it's all coming to an end so you don't have to uh, kind of worry about that all that drama is over and done with ah! and queen of wands sagittarius you pop up this is beautiful so this is telling me all that stress and anxiety that you had uh, um February and March, it's all coming to an end. In April, everything is going to turn out fine. This Aries is being very prominent. So your relationship has re-stabilized. You know, every relationship goes through that little bit of boo, little boo-boo type of thing. You know? So that can could be the case. Now, remember one thing. When I talk about relationships, it's not just relationships with your loved one as in your partner. This could be relationships with family members, with friends with business partnerships if you are in a business and you have a partner it could also mean partnerships with uh, your work your employer and you you know your subcontractors and you you know that sort of a thing your boss and you so don't just take this as a personal relationship reading you will know where and how it fits in your personal life remember this is general when i gave you a small synopsis as how this relates to me for me it is on a personal level in my personal relationship with my significant other so just to give you an idea as to how this fits in, okay? So now, uh, November, December, January, February, March, April, let's go on to May. May. May we have Cancer. Eighth house. Eighth house is about will, secrets, the occult, death, regeneration, and finances. Sexual energy and finances. And then we have the chariot. Cancer card again. Okay. Okay. So the eighth house so november december january february march april in may the eighth house aspects are uh, of prominence for you and the eighth house is wills secrets the occult uh, death regeneration sexual energy finances etc are going to be the main focus for you in the month of may and then you have the chariot card show up chariot again cancer is ruled by the moon the universe is telling you to maintain focus and balance and attend to details because finances also attend to details you have the eight again eighth house eight eight of uh, swords what is the eight of swords um you may feel like you're uh, isolated you may feel like you're re you're feeling restricted but that restriction is something that you have put yourself into so you can get out of it at any time you want and you have the chat you gotta be kidding me we have the chariot card again Ooh. The chariot card again is talking about uh, maintaining focus, attention to details, right? And here you have the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles is is um, your long-term finances, legacy for your retirement, your inheritance, etc. So this again could <laughs> actually remember I shared with you we were talking about our retirement, etc. So for me, I know where this reading is going and what it is showing. It, it This is saying that be careful of your decisions you make with regards to your long-term finances, etc. 
and you know uh, that sort of a thing and uh, take care of yourself when you're traveling pay attention to your travels make sure your vehicles are up to speed because the chariot card has popped up twice and uh, the moon card which is cancer again so be very careful about that if you are in the process of buying a new vehicle make sure you do your due diligence before you find your, buy your new vehicle now if this is pertaining to money and long-term finances etc make sure you make informed decisions okay because you may feel a little imprisoned with regards to that your finances you may feel like you have some limitations but i say don't because the chariot card is saying as long as you maintain your balance and maintain your focus right and you pay attention to detail your retirement your long-term finances should be fine okay now let's get an overall energy for that if he pops up he'll pop up again we have the king of staves which is beautiful king of wands and the king of wands is talking about we have the courage have the charm you have the power be the leader take your decisions like a leader would meaning uh, pay attention to the pros and cons pay attention to all the minor details pay attention to the minutia okay then so let's see november december january february march april may now let's go to june right for the month of june what do we have overall energy for the month of june saturn overall energy for the month of june saturn saturn rules capricorn saturn rules aquarius the tower seven of pentacles the hanging man and the eight of cups so Saturn is all about restrictions, right? Saturn it means it's like confine yourself and make sure you think, do your due diligence. And you have the Tower card. So that's saying something is going to come to an end, okay? Because it's not very stable. It has to come to an end so that something new can come in this place, not to worry. So Capricorn, Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius. So Capricorn and Aquarius would be your second and third house. Second house is your values, talents, possessions, earning ability, uh, your money etc communication third house is immediate environment and short trips so if you're going on short trips your immediate environment take care of your home make sure nobody can get in and break in and all that stuff this could also mean a little bit of damage for your house okay or your home environment make sure you take care of all of that and make sure that everything is up to speed your insurance home insurance everything is taken care of if you're going on short trips be careful okay uh, don't be driving around like a crazy person make sure you do your due diligence in terms of your travel dates etc because you could have a few delays over there and then seven of pentacles is telling me that be patient your hard work uh, you know uh, is noticed the success will come but it's a little bit delayed so be patient okay and then you have the hangman the hangman is like forcing you to take a rest it's like okay you have to take a rest okay the hangman is saying uh take a rest take a rest stop spinning your wheels take a rest and saturn is also there and the tower card also it's like take a brief break take a rest stop spinning your wheels because i feel like until now until from november 2021 to may 2022 you're going to be spinning your wheels meaning you're going to be do working 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 so universe is saying calm down cool down take a rest okay and when you take a rest you will be able to think cl clearly and look at things from all kinds of different perspective okay and this could also mean that you're hanging on to something for no apparent reason so if something doesn't behoove you let it go what's the point in hanging on to it because the tower card is saying that it has to go it will go so don't fret about it so eight of cups the eight of cups is saying you may feel like you're withdrawing a little bit you may feel like you want to move on you may feel like you uh, you have been abandoned but don't feel like that okay because the tower card is there you may feel like oh everything is lost no it didn't behoove you so don't worry about it and then you have the seven of pentacles and the seven of pentacles is saying look you know patience hard work and uh, everything is you put in all the work and effort and you're like okay where's the success where's the success okay so hang on man success is coming okay you can't force it success will come you put in the effort it's yours you earned it it's going to come to you so hang on 
June. Now let's go to July. July, you have the moon card. And you have the star card, but I'm not holding the deck upside down. So, so this was in, in, in reverse, so I'm going to take it as reverse. You have the star card reverse, which is Aquarius. The fool. The world, July is a moon card, emotions are running high, star card in the reverse, star card is talking about Aquarius, right, Aquarius is your uh, third house, third house is uh, immediate environment and short trips and you may feel like you are losing your hope and inspiration you know and some help that you thought somebody's going to give you that may be a little lacking there okay you may feel off balance but then here you are all being like you know i'm ready i'm ready to go this is a new me i've cleared the slate i want to really go i want to go i want to go so because remember in june you had the tower card so now you're like i'm ready to move on and you do have the two of cups the two of cups is saying you know, romantic love, partnerships, proposals, marriage. So something good is coming for you. And you have the world card. Oh my God, fantastic. The world card is completion, success through spiritual birth. Uh, um, it's fantastic because June was a little testy, right? You had the tower card, you had Saturn, you know, a little bit of, you know, I put in so much of hard work. Where is my returns? Where is my returns? And here you have in July, it's like, yeah, you're feeling very emotional. And then you have the star card, which is saying, man, a little bit of uh, you're losing hope, etc. But boom, you have the fool card. You're like, I'm ready to go now. I'm over it. Uh, right. Even though you may feel like you're losing a little bit of faith and hope. You have the two of cups, which is fantastic. So somebody significant is going to come and offer you something great. Could be marriage as well. And the world card, which is fantastic. This person thinks the world of you. So that hope and inspiration that you thought you were losing or that help that you thought you were going to get but wasn't coming through is actually going to come through. But <laughs> but you don't see it, right? You were kind of working yourself up for nothing. Prince of Swords. Here you go. So this is a uh, Swords, a uh, uh, Taurus. I'm sorry, Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini energy. So you have a Prince of Swords. There's going to be renewed help, renewed hope, renewed aspirations, renewed inspiration from an unexpected source. You're going to be fine. Just a little bit of ah, running around muddled. Okay, so we got July, right? So let's go to August. August, you have fire, the month of Leo, fire baby. August. You have the magician in August. Seven of Wands. Four of Pentacles, Eight of Wands. So in the month of August, uh, it's a very fiery energy that you have. It's it's August is the Leo month. Leo is your sister sign. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ninth house is your father, distant travel, higher education, your intellect, etc. That is what is highlighted in August. And you have the magician. You will feel like completely like you're on top of the world, you hold the magic wand, you, you feel empowered, you feel like you're going to be able to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. And you can, you actually can. The forces are with you. And then you have the seven of wands. The seven of wands is be careful because there could be somebody who may be trying to steal your intellectual property. Be careful, okay, or your ideas. Then you have the four of pentacles. And this is talking about, that's because of greed and desire for long-term security, okay? So be careful, okay? You are concerned about your long-term security. And yeah, you know, you may say, Sagittarius are not greedy people. I can tell you that. That's not a sign where they're very avaricious. They're not. There is somebody else who's kind of being 
a little bit greedy and want to steal from you. Okay, they see you being able to, uh, you know, create a stability in a life long term, and they are envious and they are a bit greedy and they're like, I want some of that. So be careful, guard yourself. Okay, and you have the eight of wands. Eight of wands is is talking about uh, uh, taking speedy action, quick changes, and news is going to arrive. So. Um, I'm just going to say be careful of this, somebody trying to steal your intellectual property. You're going to get some really good news though, which is exciting, right? Seven of Cups. Be careful what you choose. This is gaslighting card. So be careful what you ask for. Make sure you make wise decisions. That's August, September, September. You have Mercury, Mercury rules Gemini. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh house is your friends, marriage, partners, contracts, etc. So could be a little bit mercurial in September, right? You have the Pope, right? Or the Hierophant. <sighs> Storus energy. Okay. Be careful. There could be some exchange of words, exchange of... Uh, energies with your partners, your relationship, your marriage, your contracts, etc. Uh, you need to be a little bit careful, you know, make sure you conform to what is legal, stay within the bounds of your relationship, don't be stepping out, uh, don't do any crazy stuff if you are in a relationship, business relationship, it'll blow back on you. And have some mercy and compassion for people around you. You may be coming across as being a little bullheaded in September. You've got to calm it down. Tempers. Tempers could be flying in September. Judgment. <laughs> Pluto, forgive and forget. <laughs> so, September, calm down, okay? Don't be so judgmental, don't be harsh, forgive and forget. People are, will make mistakes, you will get angry, tempers will fly, exchange your words, but it's okay, calm down. We have Page of Pentacles and then we have the Knight of Pentacles. This is regarding, pages Pages are young people, right? So it, it could be a, a, a kid, right? A son, a daughter. And the Knight of Pentacles is, again, somebody who is a very reliable person who is not opposed to hard work and who is uh, takes the effort, takes the initiative. And the page could be, that's a knight, right? And the page could be a, a, a child, a, a younger person who is being a little bit, um, I want to go, I want to do, I want to do this, I want to do that, has all the grand ideas, but doesn't have the maturity as yet. Uh, and what I mean by child is, could be a child child or could be like pages usually associated with young adults, okay? So you may have to show some, have some patience with that person, forgive and forget type of thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe they're talking about, I want to start this project, I want to start that project. They're being a little mercurial as far as that is concerned and you're like, Make up your mind what you want to do. Maybe you have a young adult at home who's like, I want to play baseball, I want to go basketball, I want to do football. And you're like, make up your mind. I cannot pay for all the three coaching classes. Pick one. So that could be the case too. Overall energy, sacrifice, Kwani. I have a beautiful picture of her in my living room. It's actually not a picture. It's a... It's a... Um, it's a... Um, a silver figurine of hers that I've had for years. Oh my God, I don't even know how many years. Um, that was specifically made for me. Um, and uh, oh yeah, it did cost a pretty penny. It's a couple decades old. I have her in my living room and the framework also is wood and silver again. It's beautiful, it is so heavy. Um, it's. I have a couple of pieces around the house that are really, really valuable, very old and 
uh, very very heavy and valuable to me meaning like I'm emotionally tied to those pieces so uh, I have Kwan, Kwan Yi and uh, she is the quintessential earth mother she is takes care of everybody this is a mother and child what do you know even before I pulled this card I was talking about a child right <laughs> the page who could be like I want to do this I want to do that type of thing and here you are make up your mind right Kwan Yi is the kind of a person who according to mythology or whatever culture is that if you have any worries and concerns you go to her she absorbs all your sorrow and all your heartache and she's able to uh, absorb that so that you will not have to deal with it so, so she's very she's the quintessential earth mother at least that's my understanding of her which is beautiful okay so november december january february march april may june july august september let's go to october and that'll be uh, the end for this uh, reading right october october overall energy is leo okay then And then you have the Empress ruled by Venus. We have the Lover's card, right? Which is ruled by Gemini. We have Ace of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Cups and we have the Five of Cups. So October is an interesting month for y'all because you have that fury, feisty energy because October you have the Leo card, right? And Leo is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9,000. 9,000 is father, distant travel, higher education, intellect, at least some of the 9,000 aspects. And then you have three, which is the Empress, which is ruled by Venus, and it's talking about luxury, pregnancy, abundance, beautiful, bountiful stuff. So October being the 12th, um, uh, month for you before uh, November you start again anew it's all about going inward and ta uh, figuring out and clearing up your karmic houses and you know all those things right and here you have uh, the ninth house so maybe you're going to be thinking about travel your higher education your intellect maybe you're also thinking about luxury and all the things that you want in your life how to go about things doing that you're going to go inward and say you know this is i'm thinking about what truly matters to me now does this matter to me does that matter to me do i really want this luxury do i really want that what defines me so you would be thinking about all those things and you have the lover's card which is beautiful it's ruled by gemini right the lover's card is is a uh, um I'm talking about your true friendships your partnerships you know uh, it also talks about duality because it's ruled by gemini and right it's mercury it's the yin and yang and all that kind of stuff so you you're going to be thinking about all these things your relationships you know materialistic relationships materialistic dependencies relationship dependencies emotional dependencies who matters to you who doesn't what truly matters to you what causes you happiness what causes you grief a lot of internal reflection and then you have the ace of pentacles okay so here you could be making new investments in a home in a job in whatever but it could be a new investment in yourself meaning you could be after all that rethinking and clarifying and all that you could reconfigure your emotions and yourself and then here you are you have come out with a new investment in yourself you're, you're going to be from henceforth onwards these are the aspects in my life that i'm really going to invest in that is going to benefit me and then you have the five of cups you may feel a little bit you know like you know sad because you know five is a little bit about loss and regret and feeling grief and unloved etc because you have decided that you're going to invest in a new you because you finally figured what truly matters to you you feel a little bit lost a little bit nostalgic a little bit lost but when you invest in your new you right and what truly matters to you be careful on what you pick because this could be too many choices okay great to have too many choices but don't make too many commitments then what's the point right you'll be in the same old same old now let's get an overall energy for october you have the eight of cups okay 
here you are going to definitely feel like you are going to be abandoning certain aspects in your life that do not behoove you and you're going to be moving forward okay so that's actually fantastic i want to pull another card for that oh my god isis magic okay so you will definitely feel like you're going to be abandoning some things you're going to withdraw retreat and move on but then you're going to be moving on to something that's going to be so magical and so fantastic beautiful beautiful i love it i love it sagittarius i hope you'll have a fantastic year um you know november 2021 to october 2022 uh, this is going to be a really, really fantastic year. I know it. I feel it. And I truly wish you all a very, very happy uh, year. Um, because like I said many a time, for me, the new year is from my birth month. So if you're born in April, I would say April, say let's say your birthday is on April 1st. I would say that is your new year moving on, right? Um, I don't look at the calendar year as being a new year. I never have and I've never looked at it that way. A lot of people say, oh, the calendar year. No, it's your new birthday, new year, right? So that's just the way I look at it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clear up these cards and I'm going to do the astrology. I'm going to kind of, uh, uh, let me just uh, focus on getting these cards together. Uh, I'm going to do astrology as in um, read out the planetary positions and movements etc starting from November 21 going all the way until October 2022 because a lot of people don't want to be muddled with astrology they just want to do uh, tarot so am I doing an astrology chart no that's not what I'm doing I'm just going to talk about what planets are where in that particular month and transitions and retrogrades etc okay so bear with me so very interesting year Sagittarius very very interesting year I will put the time timestamp as well, right? So, okay. Where's my pencil? Um, timestamp. Okay. So Sagittarius, these are the planetary positions for you from November 2021 going on to uh, October 2022, okay? These are just general, keep that in mind. These are not specific. Like I said, if you want a specific um, uh, astrology or tarot chart for you for the next year, get in touch with me, email me, and uh, yeah, you know, we'll have a, uh, I do a phone consultation. And of course, I can do the whole year reading for you. And uh, it'll be based upon your particular time of birth, place of birth, uh, um, and uh, date of birth. So this is general, all right? So this is a little lengthy, pay attention. November 4th, new moon in Scorpio. November 5th, Venus enters Capricorn. November 5th, Mercury enters Scorpio. November 8th, Palace goes direct. November 11th, first quarter moon. November 14th, Juno enters Capricorn. November 16th, Vesta enters Sagittarius. November 17th, Jupiter semi-square Chiron. November 19th, full moon partial lunar eclipse. November 21st, Sun enters Sagittarius. November 24th, Mercury enters Sagittarius. November 26th, 
Saturn sextile Chiron, November 27th, last quarter moon, December 1st, Neptune goes direct, December 4th, new moon, total solar eclipse, December 10th, first quarter moon, December 13th, Mars enters Sagittarius, December 13th, Mercury enters Capricorn, December 18th, full moon in Gemini, December 19th, Venus retrograde, December 19th, Chiron goes direct, December 21st, Ceres retrograde enters Taurus, December 21st, Sun enters Capricorn, December 24th, Saturn square Uranus, December 24th, Jupiter quintile Uranus, December 26th, last quarter moon, December 28th, Jupiter enters Pisces. Then we have uh, January 2nd, Mercury enters Aquarius, January 2nd, New Moon in Capricorn, January 3rd, Jupiter Square True Node, January 9th, First Quarter Moon, January 14th, Mercury turns retrograde, January 14th, Ceres goes direct, January 17th, Full Moon in Cancer, January 18th, Uranus goes direct, January 18th, True Node retrograde and enters Taurus, retrogrades back to Taurus. January 19th, Sun enters Aquarius. January 24th, Mars enters Capricorn. January 25th, last quarter moon. January 25th, Mercury retrograde enters Capricorn. January 29th, Venus goes direct. February 1st, new moon in Aquarius. February 1st, Juno enters Aquarius. February 3rd, Mercury goes direct. February 8th, first quarter moon, February 8th, Ceres enters Gemini, February 11th, Jupiter semi sextile Chiron, February 14th, Pallas enters Aries, February 14th, Pluto trine true node, February 14th, Mercury enters Aquarius, February 16th, full moon in Leo, February 17th, Jupiter sextile Uranus, February 18th, Sun enters Pisces. February 23rd, Jupiter semi-square Pluto. February 23rd, last quarter moon. February 28th, last quarter moon in Sag. February 28th, Jupiter's a quintile true node. March 1st, true node semi-square Chiron. March 2nd, new moon in Pisces. March 6th, Mars enters Aquarius. March 6th, Venus enters Aquarius, March 9th, Mercury enters Pisces, March 10th, first quarter moon in Gemini, March 10th, Vesta enters Aquarius, March 18th, full moon in Virgo, I have a lot to read, <laughs> March 20th, Sun enters Aries, March 25th, last quarter moon in Capricorn, March 27th, Mercury enters Aries, March 28th, Neptune sextile true node, April 1st, New Moon in Aries. April 5th, Venus enters Pisces. April 5th, Jupiter semi sextile Saturn. April 8th, Jupiter sextile True Node. April 9th, first quarter moon. April 10th, Mercury enters Taurus. April 11th, Saturn square True Node. April 12th, Jupiter conjunct Neptune. April 14th, Mars enters Pisces. April 16th, full moon in Libra. April 19th, Sun enters Taurus. April 20th, Juno enters Pisces. April 23rd, last quarter moon. April 29th, Pluto turns retrograde. April 29th, Mercury enters Gemini. April 30th, Pallas enters Taurus. April 30th, new moon solar eclipse in Taurus. May 2nd, Venus enters Aries. May 3rd, Jupiter sextile Pluto. May 8th, first quarter moon in Leo. May 10th, Mercury turns retrograde in Gemini. May 10th, Jupiter enters Aries. May 11th, Jupiter semi-square Uranus. May 15th, Ceres enters Cancer. May 16th, full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. May 17th, Saturn semi-sextile Neptune. May 20th, Sun enters Gemini. May 22nd, last quarter moon in Pisces. Uh, May 22nd, Mercury retrograde uh, enters Taurus. May 24th, Vesta enters Pisces. May 24th, Mars enters Aries. May 28th, Venus enters Taurus. May 13th, New Moon in Gemini. May 31st, Saturn, semi-sextile Neptune. 
June 3rd, Mercury goes direct in Taurus. June 4th, Saturn retrograde. June 7th, first quarter moon in Virgo. June 13th, Mercury enters Gemini. June 14th, full moon in Sagittarius. That's beautiful. Then we have June 20th, last quarter moon in Pisces. June 21st, Sun enters Cancer. June 22nd, Venus enters Gemini. June 25th, J Jupiter semi square true node. June 28th, Neptune retrograde in Pisces. June 28th, new moon in Cancer. July 4th, Pallas enters Gemini. July 5th, Mars enters Taurus. July 5th, Mercury enters Cancer. July 6th, first quarter moon in Libra. July 7th, Venus, uh, I'm sorry, Vesta retrograde. July 13th, full moon in Capricorn. July 17th, Venus enters Cancer. July 19th, Mercury enters Leo. July 19th, Chiron retrograde. July 20th, last quarter moon in Aries. July 21st, Jupiter semi square Saturn. July 22nd, Sun enters Leo. July 23rd, Ceres enters Leo. July 25th, Juno retrograde. Uh, in Pisces, July 28th, New Moon in Leo. July 28th, Jupiter retrograde in Aries. July 31st, Uranus conjunct True Node. August 4th, Mercury enters Virgo. August 5th, First Quarter Moon in Scorpio. August 11th, Venus enters Leo. August 11th, Full Moon in Aquarius. August 19th, Last Quarter Moon in Taurus. August 20th, Mars enters Gemini. August 21st, Vesta retrograde enters Aquarius. August 22nd, Sun enters Virgo. August 24th, Uranus retrograde in Taurus. August 25th, Mercury enters Libra. August 27th, New Moon in Virgo. August 29th, True Node semi sextile Chiron. September 3rd, True Node semi sextile Chiron. September 3rd, First Quarter Moon in Sag. Semi, I'm sorry, September 5th, Venus enters Virgo. September 6th, Pallas enters Cancer. September 6th, True Node, Semi Sextile Chiron. Uh, September 9th, Mercury Retrograde in Libra. September 10th, Full Moon in Pisces. September 17th, Last Quarter Moon in Gemini. September 21st, Jupiter Semi Square Saturn. September 22nd, Sun enters Libra. 23rd September Mercury retrograde enters Virgo. September 25th New Moon in Libra. This is a lot of information. September 28th Jupiter semi square Uranus. September 29th Venus enters Libra. September 29th Ceres enters Virgo. October 2nd Mercury direct. October 2nd first quarter Moon. October 5th Vesta goes direct. October 8th, Pluto direct. October 9th, Full Moon in Aries. October 10th, Mercury enters Libra. October 17th, Last Quarter Moon in Cancer. October 23rd, Saturn goes direct. October 23rd, Venus enters Scorpio. October 23rd, Sun enters Scorpio. October 23rd, Juno goes direct. October 24th, True Node semi sextile Chiron. October 25th, New Moon Solar Eclipse. It's partial. October 28th, Jupiter retrogrades and enters Pisces. October 29th, Mercury enters Scorpio. October 30th, Mars retrograde. November 1st, first quarter moon in Aquarius. November 8th, full moon lunar eclipse total. November 16th, Venus enters Sagittarius. November 16th, last quarter moon. November 17th, Mercury enters Sagittarius. November 28th, Vesta enters Pisces. November 22nd, Sun enters Sagittarius, November 23rd, Jupiter goes direct, November 30th, Pallas uh, retrograde in Cancer, November 30th, first quarter moon in Pisces, December 6th, it's going to be uh, Mercury enters Capricorn, December 7th, full moon in Gemini, December 9th, Venus enters Capricorn, December 16th, last quarter moon, in Virgo, December 18th, Ceres enters Libra. December 20th, Jupiter enters Aries. December 21st, Sun enters Capricorn. December 23rd, Chiron direct. December 23rd, New Moon in Capricorn. December 23rd, Jupiter semi-square Uranus. Ju uh, December 26th, True Node semi-sextile Chiron. December 29th, Mercury retrograde. December 29th, First Quarter Moon in Aries. Okay, so... This is a lot of information. Now, the reason I gave you all this information is so that you will understand 
where these planets are. I'm going to put them in the description box. I'm going to cut and paste it. Pay attention. This is a lot of information, right? If you need to stop and go back, do that. A couple of things I want to point out is whenever there is any planet in retrograde, that is basically saying that it's going back to figure out whatever little boo-boos are there so you can clean up the act and then move forward. So typically when planets are in retrograde, don't make major decisions. They talk about Mercury retrograde, right? And they talk about Mars retrograde and Venus retrograde. Don't buy um, expensive electronic items. Don't buy cars. Uh, don't uh, have surgeries, you know, elective surgeries, etc. But if you've already been told that you have to have a surgery and then you end up having to schedule it at a time where certain planets are retrograde, you can't help it, right? You have to because you're not initiating something now. So basically point is when a planet uh, uh, when there are certain retrogrades don't initiate something new if you're already started it way back when before these planets went retrograde that's okay you can go ahead but don't initiate anything new retrograde also means the universe is giving you an opportunity to go back and fix little things that need to be fixed before you can continue right so it's like it's like writing in pencil and then you have an eraser to go erase and make necessary changes okay now, another thing I want to say is, as we all know, whenever there is a new moon, set your intentions, right? New moon, set your intentions. Full moon is when things come to a completion, right? So set your intentions in the new moon and energy is two days before, two days later. Some people say a week earlier, a week later. Um, set your intentions when a new moon is there. And when the, the moon is in, it's a full moon, then it's like things have come to a full circle and the moon is right up direct in the sky and it sheds light on all those things that were hidden and now you have clarity and you can see things with clarity and it's a completion of certain things and events so if there's something you need to let go let it go then um, new moon if there's something you want to start new start it then now let's talk about uh, uh, eclipses uh, lunar eclipses lunar feminine moon mother energy emotions solar masculine father action fire etc etc thought process taking action so whenever there's an eclipse it depends on where it is and what planets are around it it'll give you a, a hint of as to what are those particular aspects in your life that are going to be eclipsed eclipsed means to remove look the universe always gives us ample time to eliminate to remove things that do not behoove us if we don't take those hints and take actions when we are supposed to take action, during the eclipse, the universe is like honey bunches of oats. I gave you an opportunity to eliminate this. You didn't. So guess what? Now I am going to eliminate that for you. Right? So if you are taking the kind of person who's proactive and takes the initiative, your life will be so much more different than waiting for somebody else to make a decision for you. Then when the universe makes a decision for you, the universe is just going to remove whatever the universe thinks is not uh, appropriate for you, right? So it's taking away your power. So you decide, do you want to be proactive and take the hint when the universe gives you the hint and eliminate what you need to eliminate or you're going to wait for the universe to make that decision for you? Then when the universe eliminates certain things, you may not want that certain thing to be removed from your life. You get what I mean? So be cognizant about those things. Now, let's talk about, for example, uh, on December 4th, we have a new moon total total solar eclipse, right? Uh, 12 degrees, 22 Sagittarius. So that's a pretty intense, intense uh, uh, total, uh, solar eclipse for us. Yes, baby. What happened now? What you want now? Did your daddy yell at you? What happened, honey? Then what's it? Oh, you're right outside? Backyard, yeah. Oh, your daddy put you in the backyard? Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. Oh, Pupa. Why, Pupa? It's okay. It's okay. What? It's okay. You just came in. So what do you need? You need a treat. Give me one second, y'all. Back up, baby. Back up. Okay, back up. Don't make so much noise, my goodness. Gently. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, figured. So we have a little ritual. So usually at about 8.39, it'll be the one of the first last calls, like before we go to bed. And if we stay up late, like we kind of let him out before we go to bed. So sometimes 10, 11. But usually 8.30, 8.45, he goes, takes a little party break and he comes back in and I give him a small treat. <laughs> so he's like, I just got done with my 8.30 party break. I need my treat. Come on and give it to me. So that's what that was about. <laughs> so, and now he's fine. And so we got a treat and he's like, okay. Because you see, his dad is a little bit strict. Dad doesn't hand out treats like the way I do. I mean, I don't give him so many treats that would make him sick. But, anyhow. So, <laughs> now he's fine. He's like, I went, my party break, I got my treat, I'm good. He probably asked his dad and dad said no. <laughs> I'm telling you, these pets are like kids. Anyhow. So when we talk about the solar eclipse in Sagittarius on, on uh, uh, I'm sorry, new moon total solar eclipse um, December 4th, intense energies are around that time. So pay attention, okay? Now, um, when I was reading the October thing for the planetary positions, I was kind of chuckling because, let me go back to October 2022, where were we at? So my youngest son's birthday is October 25th and I'm looking starting from October 23rd going all the way until October 30th. He's got some intense energies here. October 23rd, like for Scorpio, but I'm a, this is for Sagittarius. But anyhow, Saturn turns direct on October 23rd. October 23rd, Venus enters Scorpio. October 23rd, Sun enters Scorpio. October 23rd, Juno direct. October 24th, True Node, semi sextile Chiron. October 25th, which is his birthday. New Moon, Solar Eclipse, it's partial. October 28th, uh, October 25th is when New Moon, Solar Eclipse, partial. October 28th, Jupiter retrograde enters Pisces. October 29th, Mercury enters Scorpio. October 30th, Mars enters uh, Gemini. So, intense energy for him so i was chuckling so when you have all these planets around certain you know your birthday or close to your birthday depending on what date of uh, sagittarian your birthdays pay attention okay like for me uh, it's right here let me see what do we have november 21st sun enters sagittarius november 24th mercury enters sagittarius which is beautiful two planets moving forward uh 26 saturn sextile chiron 27 last quarter moon in virgo so nothing shocking but let's look at 2022 november November 26th, Sun enters Sagittarius. November 23rd, New Moon in Sagittarius. That's beautiful. November 23rd, Jupiter goes direct. Oh my God. So next year, November 22nd, 23rd, 23rd. Beautiful stuff. 22nd, Sun enters Sagittarius. November 22nd of 2022, Sun enters Sagittarius. November 23rd of 2022, New moon in Sagittarius, very powerful. November 23rd, 2022, Jupiter goes direct in Pisces. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. So pay attention to these planetary uh, positions that I talk about because you can make your decisions and you can plan your life. That's what astrology in tarot is all about. It gives you a kind of a little bit of information as to what energies are around you so you can take appropriate action and be proactive that's what this is all about right so pay attention to this a lot of people may be rolling their eyes and going, well, again astrology is not for everybody tarot is not for everybody some people like both some people like one or the other um now when we talk about uh, retrogrades or oppositions you've got to be careful because they will give us signs of you know Things like, you know, be careful when you're driving. If you're an athlete, take care. Accidents can happen, broken bones, etc. So pay attention to all those things. I actually have something I wanted to share 
with you all, but I don't know where that book is right now because, oh my God, I keep moving my books around you all because whenever I want to read something, I pick it up. They, that's not it. That's not even it, baby. Not now. I'm working. You got, no, no, no. Don't. I'm still working. What do you want? You got boogers in your eyes. Nasty. Come here. Come here. You know I don't like it. Stop. Stop. Squ don't squirm. You're like a little worm right now. Stop it. Hold on a second. Okay. Drool and boogers and ay ay ay. Saint Bernard. What do you want, puppy? I'm doing a video now. Stop. Sit down. Okay. So sorry about the distraction, y'all. What, baby? Look here. Look here. Everybody's saying, Bernie, oh, look at him making it. Ooh, your doggy bread. What did you eat? Okay. Oh, what's your paw? So pay attention to that. It gives us heads up as to, you know, accidents, possible, you know, the planetary positions where uh, there is a chance for accidents to happen or things like that. We need to pay attention also as far as our health is concerned, right? So pay attention to those things. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, folks, is I, yes, baby, can I finish this video? Can I finish this video? Give me a minute. So he's pawing me, so he wants me to do something for him. So I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, if you're like interested, let me know in the comment section. Yes, baby, two minutes. Uh, I will put up another video for y'all with astrology alone, okay? And then we can talk more in depth for the next year. Leave it in, leave your... Uh... Yes, I saw that. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. This boy isn't letting me. So leave your comments below. Let me know if y'all are interested in this in-depth astrology. Then I can go into that and make a separate video for you. Fourth time, I get it. And that way, okay? All right, y'all, I gotta go. This boy is wanting my attention. Much love to y'all. See you in the next video. Yes, baby, I'm